Welcome. I'm Dr. Sharon Hayes, a cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm here today uh, with a colleague, Dr. Regis Fernandez, who is a cardiologist in our Mayo Clinic Health System, to talk about familial hypercholesterolemia. Welcome. Thank you. So why should we have a focus on familial hypercholesterolemia? So familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH, is an inherited disorder that causes very high levels of LDL cholesterol. Um, it's largely undertreated and underdiagnosed. Uh, the um, patients that have the phenotype for FH have a 20-fold risk of having premature coronary heart disease, which would um, cause, um, could cause heart attacks in men age 50 or even in the 40s and women uh, younger than uh, 50. Um, about 20% only of patients with familial hypercholesterolemia worldwide are currently diagnosed. So you say that this is a familial uh, condition. Mm -hmm. um, what are the genetics of familial hypercholesterolemia? So understanding the uh, genetics of FH is very important in order to understand the screening. FH can happen in two forms, a heterozygous form, which is the most common one, which has an autosomal dominant uh, pattern or trait. So one defective gene from one parent can be passed to the, to the children. So 50% of the children can uh, be affected, has a, children have a 50% chance of acquiring the disorder by getting a defective gene from one parent. And that's all it takes for uh, FH to, uh, to develop in, in, in a child. So what's the relative prevalence of the heterozygous and homozygous, and what's different about the homozygous patients? So in the heterozygous form, the prevalence is about one in 500 births. That accounts for about 600,000 cases in the U.S. and over 10 million worldwide. In the homozygous form, it's a much more rare form and affects one in one million births. And what is interesting about the homozygous form is that the child would get one abnormal gene from each parent. So she would have very little or no LDL receptor activity. So the child's cholesterol levels would be very high in the 600, 800 range, causing premature CAD during childhood. And those individuals need to be identified and treated very aggressively very early in life in order to prevent uh, premature CAD at that age group. So, so if, if, how are we, you say it's underdiagnosed, um, how do we screen for this condition? Correct. So in order to screen for um, FH, um, there is general screening, which can be done in the adult population. So through universal screening, screening one, once one individual is diagnosed with FH, then you can identify other family members, uh, first degree relatives from, from that uh, individual. And that's done through something that is called cascade screening. So cascade screening is once you identify one individual and you screen the family members, a new individual will be uh, identified. And that individual will give you more family members for you to continue that cascade. So cascade screen is very cost effective and is a, it's a very good way to identify patients with FH. It sounds like screening is important, this cascade. Um, what, uh, some of this is gonna come in children. What are the recommendations for screening children? Correct, so if a child has, uh, if the, the, the parents have a history of high cholesterol or a history of uh, premature CAD, the child should be screened. Um, now, there are, uh, there's some uh, advocacy, advocacy for uh, screening, uh, universal screening in children, uh, age nine to 11 before puberty, where you can detect then all cases of FH uh, if, we, if we did that. Okay, so what are the diagnostic criteria for familial hypercholesterolemia? So in an adult population, if the LDL is greater than 190, 190, then that individual will be suspicious for having uh, FH. Uh, in, the, uh, in children and adolescents, a level of 160 is considered the cutoff. Okay, and then you identify these individuals, how do you treat them? Okay, the treatment for FH involves, mo more likely we need to involve a high potassium statin. So after lifestyle modification, risk factor modification, diet and exercise, uh, pharmacological therapy will be necessary for most individuals uh, with a high potency statin. So um, are traditional risk assessments like Framingham useful in this patient population? No, actually it's not recommended because this population with 
FH, they have a high short-term and long-term risk of premature CAD. So the 10-year risk models do not adequately identify this population or risk stratify this population. Actually, non-imaging non atherosclerotic imaging is not recommending this population because most patients will need to be treated. And, find, and the negative findings of atherosclerosis in an imaging study does not, should not prevent patients to be treated. We should treat them regardless. Correct. That's what you're saying. Yes. That's right. Be aggressive. So uh, what do you see in the future for these patients and for us as caring for them? Well, I think first and foremost, the most important thing is to improve detection and treatment of FH. Like I said at the beginning, it's largely undertreated and underdiagnosed. So that will be the first thing to do. And that can be done through education of the, uh, at a level of the community level and also at a healthcare provider level, which is what we're doing here today. And so what do you see in terms of, uh, of future, um, in the future, in terms of novel treatment or, or screening? So on another level, uh, molecular biology has come in introducing new novel therapies for FH. And in this uh, uh, March uh, issue of the England Journal of, Med Journal of Medicine, there was a uh, study that was published where the researchers used monoclonal antibodies to block an enzyme that is a down regulator of the LDL receptor. That caused the levels of LDL receptor to increase and reduce um, LDL levels up to 65%, which is more than what we see with hypothesis statins without the added side effects. So in the future, molecular biology um, of the LDL receptor will help to, um, to come up with novel therapies to treat FH uh, for patients that either don't respond to FH or for patients that are intolerant to statins. Thank you. I've learned a lot. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us today.